gonna start this in three, two, one. Welcome to 614 Filmpreneur. I am Michael Cheney, and I have two lovely ladies here with me today, which is pretty awesome. Um, one who is sitting in for our favorite, Jennifer Castle White. I have Rachel Ryder here. Hi, how are you? Good, how's it going? Good. Are you excited about sitting in for us? I am actually excited. I know, you're gonna do amazing. Um, Cause you know this, this space well. Um, but let's talk about our guest today, who I'm super excited about um, because I have gotten the pleasure of visiting her, her space, and we'll talk about what that space is, and I have attended um, some seminars there, and I've even hosted an event at this space, and this space is Haven Collective, and we have one of the co-owners co here with us today, and that is Melissa Blackburn. Hi, so hey. happy to be here. Yes, we're so happy you are here. Thank you. So I can't wait to hear about what you're doing at Haven because I know you're doing some really amazing things. And I know that just for the few minutes talking with you, I maybe had some perceptions about Haven that aren't quite true. So I can't wait for you to clear some of that up. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay, so <laughs> let's start by what is Haven Collective? Sure. Haven Collective is a co-working space on Riverside Drive in Upper Arlington. We happen to have childcare on site, which, set, which sets us apart from a lot of the co-works in town. Right. Co-working is popping up everywhere, so hopefully most of your listeners are familiar with it at yes. least. We've tried to take the approach where we really focus on work-life balance for entrepreneurs and solopreneurs um, so that they understand that it doesn't have to be all work all the time. You can also take care of yourself mentally and physically to get your best work done. Yeah, and like you don't have to be alone. Correct, yeah. Because the truth is, is that being an entrepreneur is sometimes very lonely. And there have been times early on in my business where I worked from home and I was by myself and it kind of sucked. It kind <laughs> of, yeah. It's, all, it's a constant thing. And when we really dig down to what we're providing, Danielle and I, my, my co-founder, like to say that we're in the business of curing isolation. Yes. We want to give people a community and resources to thrive because the highs and lows are real. That's totally. very nice. Like a lot of people work from home now. I do a couple days a week and yeah, it is very like isolating. Yeah. And, so. and then you get distracted, of course, yeah. the laundry, the dishes, exactly. you That's gotta take the dog thing. out. Um, and it's just very easy to get distracted. So to have, Coworkers that keep you accountable, that keep your positive energy up, and can even help brainstorm in some cases. It's right. been very great for so some of our members. So it sounds like there's kind of like this team atmosphere. Is I that, like to think so, yeah. Okay. So like, what about someone like me? So if I go to a co-working space, I don't like to talk to people. I know that sounds <laughs> yeah. crazy. Yeah, I guess, I guess how does this work, really? Like, I've never been to one. Okay. So. okay. I like, think you're going to go visit Haven House. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so because, okay, you're, you're talking like it. it's a team environment. So it's people from all different businesses, correct? They just right. come in. So we chose business. not to focus in any one industry. Okay. We, just by our very name being Haven Collective, we wanted to have a wide range of backgrounds and experiences and businesses. And we also wanted to account for the people who might be a little less extroverted as mm -hmm. well as, you know, those who really want to be chatty. So we have... When you walk in our lounge, which is for those who would enjoy more of a coffee shop atmosphere, there's music going, there's free conversation, the kids club is off of that space. So there's just more going on. And yeah. then if you wanna walk in and go to the left, you can go to the library instead. So if you just need to be around people and feel the warmth of a space and have a table to spread out, you bring your headphones, you sit there, you know, people might wave and say hi, but they understand you're trying to get work done right, sure. with yeah. your head down. So we have created easy ways for people to say, like, hey, yeah, I have totally. stuff to do today. Yeah. And it's like a very comfortable space. I mean, you've got to go there. Mm -hmm. Like, the decor is awesome. And I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm, I'm like a fanatic for that kind of stuff. Right. I mean, it's like so cool and relaxing. I could totally see how you could come get some work done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. We... The best compliment we get is when people say, I had the most productive day today. Yeah, because we just want to make sure that we've taken care of everything you could possibly need. Not just having great coffee and great people around you, but we have snacks. We have once a week meditation. We have once a week okay. yoga. Just wow. little things, little breaks, because you have to get work That's done. Cool. Mm -hmm. Little breaks so that you can be taking care of yourself mentally to really be productive in those focused work times. Right, because yeah. that's a huge piece of all this, right? Mm -hmm. Being an entrepreneur, working for yourself, the mental aspect of it is oftentimes the most challenging. 
Oh, for sure. I mean, your mindset is everything. The stories we tell ourselves, the the fear, all of it. And you have to take care of yourself mentally right. to go for this long journey that it's going to be. Exactly. So I have to imagine opening up a facility like you have. Mm-hmm. That's different than, say, me starting a painting business where in the beginning it was me and a paintbrush. Yeah. There's not right. much expense that goes into that. Yeah. <laughs> There's not, you know, electric bills or, you know, you guys have your technology is like on point. Thank at you. Haven. Yeah. Um, so you just mentioned fear. How how did you even get to the point where you can open up, you know, this facility, this space that <laughs> takes money and time yeah. and like, how does all that develop? Well, I don't do anything small. That's just me personally. You know, I'm the type of person when I have an idea and you know my soul is on fire I just have to go or I won't be happy and Mm -hmm. I think throughout my career I've been put in situations I had no business being in I've pretty much always had more responsibility than I knew what to do with you know more you know bigger projects than I should have been given and I just always had to buckle down and do it whether I was scared or not I was either gonna fail and learn something or I was gonna win and learn something so I think it's just truly a blessing that I've been put in some of the situations I've been in to just shake that fear out of me. Right. Um, and I know a lot of people aren't in that fortunate position, but um, as far as my career path, you know, I, I was very much at an early age put in some pretty scary situations that I just had to get through. And, and that just kind of helped you maybe get the confidence. For sure. I mean. To- I think the confidence is it, and then, of course, my husband is an entrepreneur as well. Okay. Um, He was in-house for a company, and I convinced him to go out on his own, and after seeing what he went through and celebrating five years on his own, you know, I saw what it took, and he was so encouraging, and he knew that I was driven and that I wasn't going to let the family down. Right. Um, So I was very lucky also to have that you know my husband in my corner and you know a really great mentor really um in terms of entrepreneurship and just having to see how disciplined he had to be and how um honestly like he was the one who showed me that it doesn't have to be a grind like if you're really smart with your time and you're really deliberate about your work like it can be a nine to five and you can still have Mm -hmm. family and you still can you know have your passions outside of work and so um he also led by example in that respect so I was able to walk into it knowing that it's going to take a lot, but very nice. more confident that no matter what happened, I have an awesome partner, and I could always go work for someone else if I fail. Right. I could always just right. go back to work. Yep, totally. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that, like, fully answers your question, but from the mental standpoint, that's where I'm coming from. It's, you just have to do it, right? Yeah. I mean, you're going to be scared. There's going to be challenges. It's just deciding that you're going to do something and following through with right. it. And I think um, a lot of people, I mean, there's so much I can say on this topic. A lot of people want it to be planned out perfectly and everything mm-hmm. has to be figured out. And that perfectionist syndrome is going to keep you from just doing something every time. Mm-hmm. And something I always like to refer back to, um, I worked in tech and watched software being developed and actually worked with teams to develop software. And it occurred to me early on that these big companies are putting out their minimum viable product. And the best ones are putting out a base level product and listening to their customers and iterating from there. So if it's good enough for Apple, right, right, it should be good enough for us. Right. You know, put out something that is worthy of a client or two. Mm-hmm. Learn from those experiences, grow from those experiences, and really, how can you fail if you're listening to your customer and totally right. responding to what they want? Right. It's like what I always try and kind of get my mind to think is that it doesn't always have to be a work that you put out sometimes you need that b c d work right mm-hmm. you put it out there because often just getting started is the hardest piece of all right. this and then you learn from it eventually you're going to be producing that a work often but if you're just waiting on the a work especially in the beginning you're yeah. probably never going to get get started yeah i do agree that in the beginning you just take what you can and learn from it but i would say do that um, as a way to get very clear about your target customer and, right. and where you do your best work and for whom. And there's no shame in, in taking whatever work you can get in the beginning totally. to get really clear on that because to get a little woo-woo for a minute, 
the universe can't move to give you what you want if you don't know what you want. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to get really clear. That's your only job That's at the true. beginning. Just Rachel to get really, really likes woo-woo stuff, so I Oh, do you? Oh, we can go there. She loves woo-woo. <laughs> don't. My business partner, Danielle, is totally, you know, on that, on okay. that vibe. And so she's she's made me more of a believer like over time. I like it. No, but I'm right. I, I guess I'm I'm woo-woo. Because woo I too. believe it. I really do. I think when you, it's like, you know, people say, I hate to sound so cliche, but you put it out there, the universe will will help you yeah. you know I 100% agree with that yeah. you know what I mean now it doesn't mean that you just put that thought out there and then sit on the couch right. and eat potato chips no you have to work for you it you have to work <laughs> for it but the idea is is that when you think along those lines you put yourself around people like that and that's actually what Haven could do you know mm -hmm. one thing that I have I have um kind of struggled with over the years is finding people who are business oriented like I am like I have friends I've had for years and they work for their own companies, which is, you know, not their own companies. They work for, you know, a big company or a law firm or what have you. Um, and they've never really understood me and my drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's be honest, my craziness when it comes to <laughs> business and what I'm doing. And it sounds like I might be able to find people at Haven that are kind of on my same, same wavelength. Yeah, there's it a definite. Like a, it sounds like a really good, like, networking opportunity. Yeah. So is it? It really is. I think, um, you know, we talked a lot about entrepreneurs being there, but there definitely are folks who work for big companies, but they're the only employee in Columbus, okay. let's mm -hmm. say. But typically people who are willing to take on work like that are more self-motivated and driven and, and right. t share some of those personality traits. So um, in terms of networking, very much so. There's like kind of a like-minded vibe mm -hmm. with everyone um, that's at Haven. And um, we also try to encourage networking through the multiple events we throw every month. At minimum, we have three. We're always trying to help our members um, as part of their membership because they get three events a month, one being a professional development event, one being a personal development event, and one being a non-networking networking event. Okay. So just giving opportunities every month for you to grow and learn and meet new people and have a safe space if it's not in your nature to put yourself out there totally. and meet new people. Right. So the first time that I had gone to Haven was for an event. It Which was, one did you go to? It was a photo branding. Oh event yeah, for Heather with Heather Moran. Mm -hmm. Let's give her a shout out. <laughs> um, and it was it was it was awesome. The setup was super cool, and it was nice because it created this like professional environment for say the person hosting who mm -hmm. would not uh, otherwise get an opportunity like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the events are super cool. Can you speak a little bit more about the events? Like, what kind of events are they? How would someone listening to this show who's an entrepreneur or they want to be an entrepreneur, they want to leave their job, what kind of events are you having that could help someone in that situation? Sure. So we do our best to listen to our community and based on the questions we're getting at the front desk or what we know people are struggling with, we really reach out into our community and try and find the best contributors we can and um, for instance we knew that a lot of people were hiring their first employee and, and struggling with that a little bit so we thought okay who can we bring in here to help with that subject right. matter so we brought someone in who is very passionate and knowledgeable about strengths finders and using strengths finders as a way to understand not only your strengths but what you might lack and so how to hire people mm -hmm. that can complement your strengths so that was a very worthwhile cool. workshop for folks um, we also know that several of our business owners are at that point where they're trying to decide if they're going to take investment or they want to go seek um, get a loan or seek fund you know other forms of funding right so I think it's next week or the week after we have um, a company coming in that's going to teach us all about the different ways that you can gain funding. That's awesome. And so, again, it's just listening to our community and trying to figure out what they need to know um, and, and putting out good content for them. Are there still, I don't know how this works, but like seats available for that? Because I feel like that would be one of the big things to stop people from doing it is maybe I don't have the funding for it or, mm -hmm, you know, right. like that. So I guess how do they get in touch with you to go to these events? Sure. So we have a couple of different ways. If you go on our website, we list everything on our happenings page. Mm -hmm. You can also go on our Instagram on the get tickets button. Just click that and you'll see everything. But even better than that, if you go right on Eventbrite and type in Haven Collective, you won't just see the events that Danielle and I are hosting. You'll see all the events that anyone who's rented our space, you know, our members, anybody is hosting because That's awesome. 
literally every night a week there's one to two events going on there super cool. so if you want to just see what's available i would just go to eventbrite and type in haven collective and that way you're not just seeing our stuff you're seeing what our community is putting out there as well very cool yeah so i hosted an event there mm -hmm. and um what i what i wanted to do <laughs> <laughs> Did I not buy you? it might have been a little bit before, before I yeah okay. that's at least that's what i'm gonna say um but it was an event that was based on um, how to get small businesses exposure online okay and how blogging can help you know a little bit of SEO I have a small background in that mm -hmm. um, but I brought in my brother who's an expert in SEO and and had some uh, real success with his personal finance blog as a matter of fact uh, over the last two years he sold it to a company in Israel so that gives you an indication wow. of, oh, wow. of, of the of, of how well he did but I brought him in and I got some of my close friends who are business owners and we came in and we did maybe like a two hour uh, little seminar um, I mentioned the technology they have so he could you know set his his uh, his Apple his MacBook right up to you know we had a big screen and everything um, we brought in wine we had snacks um, so it's fun. So it's good to have the wine. Yeah. <laughs> and it really helps you understand SEO a little bit more, I think, when you can have a glass of wine. Yeah. You know? Yes. <laughs> um, so now I said something to you earlier before we, we started the show, and I had some sort of maybe misperception of Haven. And this is probably my bad. Now that I'm thinking about this, it's common. I've caught myself. I know where you're going. This is common. But I asked you if Haven was more focused towards female entrepreneurs. And you quickly told me no, <laughs> and then you said, "I'm going to explain this to you." So I want you to explain to, why why is that? Why was that my perception? Do you know? Well, you know, we try in our marketing to make sure that we are featuring some of the amazing males that we have in our space, and we are celebrating that. You know, we have diversity in our community, um, but there's only so much we can do. So right. it's just coming and experiencing um, to see just how much diversity we have, not just men and women, but you know, just all types of diversity. So we were struggling with this in the beginning. Okay. Should we open as Columbus's first women only co-working space? Mm -hmm. And I just, it did not sit well with right. me. Right. It really did not sit well with me for a few reasons. The first being, if we're going to be talking about not excluding women, about getting a seat at the table, about leveling the playing field, I just don't think we need to play the same game. Yeah. Right. I agree. You have totally. to include everyone. If inclusion is part of our brand, as right. it is, mm -hmm. we need to include everyone. So we wanted there to just be a safe space for really just smart people. That's all we want is right. just smart people. And we were so thoughtful about the way we designed the space around this idea of inclusion, even so much that our bathroom doors do not have a man or a woman on them. You know, we yep, just, we totally. want there to be a safe space for the LBGT community. We want there to be a safe space for um, even events with um, some of our youth that are struggling, just welcoming open arms everyone. Yeah, that, that's awesome, I love it. Have you ever gotten any pushback because of that? Not at all, I, it's just a misconception, like I will say, there have been one or two times that I've toured a man through the space and he'll say like, wow, there's a number of women here. And I have to explain that, you know, though there are a number of women in our community, it's not just women. And right. don't worry, there's some guys over here and some guys over here. <laughs> it's actually about 30%, okay. if not 40 now, um, okay. of men that are there. Um, it's also kind of funny that people get that perception because we were owned by two women right. and it was designed by two women and if you were to look if you were to take tours of various co-working spaces in Columbus for sure we would be the most um feminine decor I okay. guess you could say but it's not like everything's pink no, it's, right. not, <laughs> it's not like that that's not my vibe not at, at least um you know but we again wanted to be intentional we didn't want it to feel like a cold office building mm -hmm. we wanted to feel like an extension of your home that's why the first thing you see when you walk in is a couch right you know it's it's just warmth and home and welcome and inviting and i think a lot of that has some more feminine nurturing undertones so mm -hmm. that might be where people get the idea from maybe so and i mean i hate to say this but even just the fact that you offer child care thank you yes i mean that was the second that that, that's the that, second point you know we shouldn't be thinking like that nowadays for sure but because you offer child care you might have a tendency to think well okay it's it, this is more focused towards women 
while we were very careful to talk about how we support parents because it takes two to make a child mm-hmm, right. and that means the responsibility falls on not just moms but right. dads so we have a number of men who get really excited when I tour them through the kids club because they stay at home with it with their child one or two days a week mm-hmm. and they need time so um, it's it's well received by everyone well and then I think it would also benefit the the child. I mean, if there are other kids in there as well, give them like a, mm-hmm. oh, that's a, good point. a social. It's great for socialization yeah. and we do um, offer it a la carte so you can use it when you're in a pinch or whenever you need it, but then we do have a more structured morning program. So we try and encourage parents to bring their kids, let's say every Tuesday morning, mm-hmm. every Thursday morning, so that they're with the same kids, the same child care provider, you know, and they're in more of a routine just like their parent. That's cool. Now, do the parents have to stay there and work when they drop the child yeah. off? Okay. Yeah. So it's just a, you stay anywhere in the building that you're gotcha. comfortable in and we'll handle your babe. But gotcha. um, that's cool. can't leave. <laughs> now, do you have to be a member to come there? Like how, how does a membership work? Do you have to be a member to host an event? You don't. So we do have rates for drop-ins if you just want to come for the day. Of course, if it's your first time, we'll always offer you a free day. So, you know, you can come. Check yeah, it out. I love it. Check it out. <laughs> You're even allowed to take your monster in there. Yes. yes. <laughs> we'll allow it. But um, rentals are also open to the community. You don't have to be a member, but if you're going to do it more regularly, it really doesn't make sense monetarily for you to do the rates, the non member rates for rentals versus the member rates. It's half price if you're a member. Cool. So we want to encourage our community to use the space to its fullest potential, um, but we don't want to exclude people who, you know, might be traveling in from out of town and just need to host one thing. Or, mm-hmm. um, and we've been very lucky that there's been some bigger companies in Columbus that have used us for off-site meetings, you know, one-off things here or there that luckily we've been able to give them space for. That's a good idea. So if I wanted to do like a team meeting with all my painters, could mm-hmm. we could use Absolutely. Could your spaces? Yeah. That, that would be cool. Yeah, we would like that. That would be fun. Um, are you going to go visit Haven, Rachel? I think I'm going to go visit. No pressure, yeah. Rachel. I'm just sitting right here. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> and we'll make sure you get all set up for a co-working day. <laughs> no, yeah, I would love to. Like I was saying earlier, I work from home on Mondays and Fridays usually. And it is, it gets a little bit distracting. I'm like, Good. oh, wait, yeah. I have to do this. Or like, my dog needs my attention because she's still a puppy. And like, yeah. <laughs> so, You yeah. said it like when you get distracted with laundry. That's yeah. what I'm saying. If, I, if I'm home. I know. I have to clean the whole house before I, I can work. I'm the I same way. I couldn't imagine. Like, I had one job for just very quickly where I worked from home, and it was not good for me. Mm-hmm. It was a, a big realization that I need to be around people. Right, yeah. right. Now, how did you find your business partner, Danielle? So we met in graduate school at Ohio State in the Working Professional MBA program over 10 years ago. Okay. Um, she thought I was on the staff for some reason. It was orientation night, and she and I were the only two females. And so I just went up to her and said, you know, my name and that I joked with her that I've decided we're going to be friends. Okay. And I think she just probably thought that was really weird. (laughs) But then she saw me the first night in class and I was enthusiastically like like, (laughs) pointing at the seat next to me like, come sit here, come sit here. And that was it. I basically told her she was going to be my friend and that's what happened. Wow. (laughs) I mean, what else was I going to do? I was in an unfamiliar situation and I just... I needed a friend, so I asked. There you go. Hey, whatever <laughs> it works, works out. Right? Yeah. Um, so, how did you realize you'd be a good fit as business partners? Because that can, that can be, be kind of tough. Your yeah. friends, yeah. you know, they say not to really get in business with your family, friends. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know what all that's worth, but for you, it seems to be working out that you've got a good friend with you. Oh yeah, it's been wonderful. We knew from graduate school that we had very different strengths. You know, we're. I mean, just. If you meet the two of us, it's just very obvious. We're completely different people, and it works really well for us. And I think we're both able to, you know, laugh at ourselves. And that's the key to me. Like, I knew I needed to work with someone who was really self-aware, you know, knew who they were, knew what their strengths were, knew where they needed to, like, lean on me for help. Um, In many ways, the things I learned in my previous life as a manager and what stood out to me with my employees, like, Danielle embodies all those things. Right. You know, she knows who she is. She knows what she's great at. She knows what she wants to be working on. And I'm the same way. So mm-hmm. we don't even have to talk about it most times. We just, when there's a task at hand, we just know who's going to do what inherently. So we, you just have a good balance with each other. Yeah. And, and we had a lot of practice having to do projects and work together through mm-hmm. graduate school. So, I mean, I wouldn't have graduated if it wasn't for her. I mean, no, she. Now, would she say the same thing about you? Um, 
<laughs> I think she, I, I don't know. You can ask her when she's on. I think um, she challenges me to live life a little more fully, and I challenge her to think bigger about our business. Nice. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I wonder what she'll say, but I, well, I think it'll I'll, be that. She's going to be on in a few weeks, so yeah. we'll be sure to ask her. Yeah. So you just said she challenges you to think bigger. Does or that... opposite. She, it's like she challenges me to enjoy life. She's, okay. she's the flow, and I'm the hustle. I got it. So <laughs> that, uh, the reason that caught my attention is because you 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 have another little adventure on the horizon with oh, House yeah. of Haven. Uh-huh. You want to talk a little bit about that? We can we can talk a little bit about okay. it. Um, we have another space opening, and we'll be able to talk about that more on social media. So if you're following us at Haven Collective on Instagram, um, we'll be slowly dripping tidbits about that coming up. But yeah, we have another space opening up. Our wait list is real for the offices, so we knew we Amazing. had to get. We knew we had to get more space and more offices ready to go. So you knew it was time. Mm-hmm. What is your, if you could give, say, a new entrepreneur or someone thinking about, I want to start a business, um, what is your number one you know, piece of, of information you could give them right now to encourage them and say, here's what you need to do? with my maybe maybe focus it towards mindset I it seems like you yeah I mean have some good information when I think we talked that. about it a little bit earlier I'm a big believer in just starting somewhere just tell someone you trust about your idea and see the reaction and then see if they can introduce you to somebody and tell your story to that person and you know just make the rounds for a little while talking about your idea just to see if it has legs and then don't be scared to take on your first client and see where it goes even if you have to do that at you know, a discounted rate or just, an, you know, a comfortable way to just start your side hustle out. Yep. And they can always start by coming to Haven. There you go. And networking and maybe finding that person to yeah. help them along. Something we love to do um, and we challenge ourselves every day to do is to connect people to the right people and resources for them to be successful. So pretty much every day on my to-do list is like, who can I connect today? Amazing. Can you tell everybody one more time how to follow Haven, how to get in touch with you if they have more information or if they want more information, can you go ahead and give us those sure. avenues again? You can go to havencolumbus.com. You can go to haven.columbus, um, sorry, haven.collective on Instagram um, and the same handle on Facebook. Um, we're pretty easy to find, actually. If you just type in Haven and Google, Danielle's done a really awesome job okay, good <laughs> of being deal. able to find us. Well, you're awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Rachel. You Thanks are amazing me. as well. And <laughs> thank, you. thank you for joining 614 Fempreneur.